so we are back out of the shop and we have got a box of goodies for the car today, not all of which I'm going to install just yet. Some of it needs to be on the lift out there, but we've got the bag of goodies that we wired up for the car, uh, the miscellaneous sensors for this area and this area. Also bought a couple of brand new Acura boots for the steering rack that's in the car. We'll get to those later. We've got the VTEC solenoid heat shield here. I might repaint that, probably not, with the stainless steel bolt that I use for grounds for wiring. Then I have the hood latch from the car that I ran through my ultrasonic cleaner and it had a bunch of stuff like that in it. Pretty disgusting. So uh, I'm going to get this greased back up and I scrape that last little bit out of there, get some new grease in this, and we'll put that back on the car later. So that'll be nice help it not get stuck like the other ones do and they get old. Now we've got some transmission bolts. Transmission bolts. Transmission bolts. These are actually for the stiffener on the bottom of the engine that I still don't have. Then we will get into these expensive boys here. These are all of the bolts for the subframe that I did not have when we were putting it in the car. So I ordered the correct ones. So like I said, the subframe just kind of, I wouldn't call it jerry-rigged, but about half put in right now, enough to roll around, no big deal. But we got to get it back out into the other part of the shop to put these in. So I'll probably just throw these in when we go to put the engine in the car. So these will sit for just a little while. Honda's very proud of those too. They're like 12, 11, and $9 a piece for the three sets of two that I have. So if you're going to do that subframe swap with new bolts, or if you don't have the other bolts, be prepared to spend about 60 bucks on them. Now, this guy here, this is for the side of the engine over here uh, to go to a K-swap mount. Now, the reason that I needed this is because it is for a CRV, and this is a TSX engine. So they had two different engine side mounting brackets. And what this does is it'll fit this engine because they were very similar but this side is different. And what it does is essentially converts this engine to a CRV to mate up with the Hasport EKK all wheel drive mounts that will mount the transmission in the vehicle. So essentially, instead of making a separate mount kit that's one mount for a TSX and uh, two mounts for a CRV, it's just three mounts for a CRV and you get this bracket. This bracket I thought would be really expensive, but it was only like 60 bucks from Honda. So not a bad deal. So next step is we're going to put all of this on the engine and then we'll start these bolts just to make sure, the uh, transmission bolts, just to make sure that I have all the right ones to get this thing in the car. And then uh, we'll keep working on wiring while I save up to buy a clutch and uh, the mount kit. But the, yeah, getting this engine in the car is not very far away. Getting it running, still a little bit in the future, but uh, it's looking pretty good right now. So let's get this stuff on here and keep moving towards it. So made some progress, needs a little bit of adjustment. As you can see, the uh, VTS wire is a little bit long. So in order to make it work out, I have to pull through about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so, which my hand's got some oil on it. So it's proving difficult, but anyway, uh, you get the idea. So everything else looks pretty good. Honestly, I didn't know if I liked the way that this turned out, but it looks pretty decent, honestly. Um, it's definitely tough, no doubt about that. So, yeah, this is the uh, VTS, VTC, and CKP sensors, and they're all wired in, look pretty good. I'll get uh, some OE zip clips for this area here and this area here, but the, the uh, lines I drew on it with the Sharpie R2 indicate that I'm going to put some uh, shrink fabric on it, which I'll show that later, but it is a really good... Um, abrace abrasion resistance for these to keep things from wearing through now dr25 is very tough shrink wrap but it never hurts to have a little extra protection especially if you're going to be racing the car or if you're making a harness like this where it's a little bit more difficult to replace things because there's only one connector they're joined into so that's that side never mind the boost solenoid here that's uh probably not going to end up going there probably end up just cutting this tab off but 
Uh, you can see here ECT, CMPB, and CMPA. They're all in. They all look pretty good. Got them all zip tied together. This might need heated and turned that way just a tad to take some strain off of the wire there, the cable. But uh, yeah, this side looks really good. It's super compact. And uh, we have an element that uh, I'll go show kind of what this looks like factory. It's a very similar engine, so you can see how much uh, daintier this is. And it's actually much, much more robust. So pretty good upgrade here. Compact and robust. That is not something that uh, the OEs like to pay for, but it is something I'm willing to take the time to make. So let's go check out the element so you can see the difference between these two uh, areas and how much smaller you can make this stuff and how much more robust it can actually be. All right, so this might be a little tough to see, but this is an element that uh, it's actually my dad's car, but it'll be a perfect uh, example here because the TSX was very similar in this area. You can see here that's CMPB, CMPA is kind of hidden up in here, tip of my fingers on it, but you can see this wiring harness is actually fairly compact, but the ECT runs in into a junction area down here, so it's not included in that, but this is the uh, spark plug harness, which on my engine will actually come out through there. But yeah, looks uh, much smaller on mine. You know, this here, this hall is uh, well protected for, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles and dirt, grime, you know, the everything that a car will see in the market. But uh, mine is not going to be living that life. So it's a lot, a lot more um, compact on mine. That's the VTC down in there, dead center in the screen. And you can see the harness is, man, that thing's pulled really tight. But regardless, you get the idea. Let's see if you can see the VTS, VTP. The VTP I will not even be using, which is the one, let's see if I can get my hand to it. That's this guy right here. Won't even be using that. So that whole harness got eliminated. And the reason I can get rid of that is because I will be using an oil pressure sensor that sends an actual value to the ECU, not just a... Uh, the like a switch like the Honda's used I don't believe we use them anymore but um, they just say yes we have more than X amount of pressure so the sensor I'll be putting in will give an actual real-time value so this is eliminated because what this is things purpose was is to say yes we have the oil pressure to run VTEC so it was two switches one just turned off the light on the dash and the this one here tells the ECU we have I believe I want to say 43 plus uh, PSI of oil pressure and then this is the VTEC solenoid here that actually engages once the ECU gets that signal regardless that's the theory behind why I won't be running that and that is a good look at an engine that was very similar to mine however was a little different but you can see the difference between the two harnesses All right, so I got the bolts put in, the engine and trance. It looks like I only made one mistake on this step anyway, which is mind blowing. But anyway, uh, this bolt here goes through the starter, through the block, and then into the transmission, which is why it's so long. Well, I ordered two of this bolt. The other one's laying right there. I thought, I think I must have thought that it goes there and through into the trans, which it does not. I think I already have that bolt, which is good. So I won't have to order another one. And the uh, other bolt laying down there behind the oil pan is the fourth stiffener bolt, which one goes here, two in the bottom of the trance, and then one goes in the back of the block, but I'm not exactly sure where. So I'll have to get a stiffener to figure that out for sure, but I have it, so that's good. The other bolts sticking out of the block here, these all go through the trance into the block, so that's all looking good. Honestly, we're, uh, we're moving along pretty good here. I think the uh, next step is just continue to wire, save up for a clutch and mounts, and then get the engine in the car and maybe do a little bit of prep in here, delete the uh, throttle cable that I said I was going to in the last video and forgot, maybe get rid of that random brake line that was meant to clear the EVAP and the battery, figure out how to reroute that. And then, uh, yeah, get this engine and transmitter together with a super single in there from Comp Clutch, throw it in the car. So it's all coming along really nicely right now. I think what I'm gonna do with the wiring is get the entire harness made into one branch that runs to the actual ECU and I believe the ECU that I'm going to use on this is an ECU Master EMU Black 
And then I like the way that it communicates and their, the simplicity of their CAN system to network the entire car together uh, using their PDU or I believe PMU, which is a relay and fuseless system. It monitors everything. It'll throw up error codes on the ADU, which is the dash display. Um, I believe I'll get the seven inch in that. I think I'm just gonna get the Matthias special, which is, uh, you know, 4,700 bucks. So there's gonna be some saving for that. But to get it in this car, all wheel drive, get everything on a CAN network where it just eliminates a bunch of wires. Everything is talking to the next piece. Everything knows what's going on. It'll be really nice. So yeah, that's a little ways off though. Gotta finish getting this bad boy wired, get it made into that, get it in that, get the wire into that, and then move on. But first, I need to sell all of that. Who wants some B-Series parts? Please help. <laughs>